Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the very best dash cams that are available here in 2023. Now to get started though, why do you need a dash cam in the first place? In case you get involved in a collision, for example, uh, well, you're gonna have the dash cam footage to prove that you were not the person at fault. This can help avoid legal battles and help speed up insurance claims. When your car is parked, you've got the motion detection to record in case somebody keys your car. Or in the case of a hit and run, your dash cam's impact detection can record that uh, and capture the license plate. That way your insurance company knows who to go after and you aren't stuck having to pay for your deductible. Or maybe just something fun and interesting happens on the road and now you're able to capture and share that video with others. Now I've tested a lot of different dash cams and in this video I wanna go over my favorite options available uh, with different features and at different price points. Down in the video description, I'm gonna to link to all the dash cams that I recommend here, uh, as well as to some of the recommended accessories like cables, memory cards, etc. And so with that said, let's go ahead and go over the very best dash cams that are currently available. So jumping right into things, my go-to recommendation for the best dash cam currently available on the market is the VFO A139 Pro. I've been testing this dash cam out a lot recently, and as you guys know, especially after watching my full review, uh, this is the first dash cam that features the new Sony Starvis 2 sensor. And this helps give the A139 Pro some improved video quality and improved low light recording. In fact, the 4K video that the A139 Pro can produce uh, has some of the best video quality out of any dash cam I've ever tested. And like every dash cam that I'm gonna recommend here, it's capable of recording both when you're driving or when you're parked. And for parking recording, you're gonna to have to give the dash cam power while you're parked, and you can either have it uh, tapped into your car battery for power, or you can use a dedicated dash cam battery pack. I'll talk more about the dedicated battery pack options uh, toward the end of the video. Then coming back to the A139 Pro, it's also got Wi-Fi built in, so you can connect to it with your phone, and that's useful for downloading videos to your phone or changing the different dash cam settings. Uh, and it's especially helpful here because there's no LCD on the back of the A139 Pro. Like every dash cam, it's designed to record continuously, and then after you fill up the memory card, it begins overriding the oldest footage. Uh, in case something interesting or important happens on the road, you can just press the button on the back of the dash cam to trigger an emergency recording event. Additionally, VFO also has an optional wireless Bluetooth button, and you can install this somewhere on your dash that's more convenient to press than the dash cam itself. And then you just press the button to save and protect uh, the current clip that's being recorded to the dash cam. Uh, this Bluetooth button, it's also compatible with the other VFO dash cams that I'm gonna recommend in this video too. The A139 Pro is available with a variety of different add-on cameras to give you some additional camera angles. It's got uh, four different options. You've got the single channel version that's designed to record just out of the front of the vehicle. This is gonna be your standard setup. You can also do a two channel setup for front and rear recording to also record back behind you. Uh, and this is gonna be kind of your traditional setup. This is actually my preferred configuration of the A139 Pro. You can also get it as a two channel setup with front and interior cameras. And that cabin camera makes this really popular with rideshare drivers. And then finally, you can go for the full three channel setup with front, interior, and rear cameras to cover all the different angles. Now, as far as downsides with the A139 Pro, uh, if you go for the full three channel setup, there is gonna be a reduction in video quality uh, with the front camera. It's still gonna look good, but there is a quality drop compared to single or dual channel recording. It's also a pretty power hungry dash cam, and so when you've got it recording in parking mode, uh, it's gonna give you less parking recording time than some other dash cams. Speaking of which, it also lacks some of the advanced parking mode functionality that we see out of some of the premium options. There's also no cloud functionality available in this dash cam. You can connect to it using Wi-Fi when you're sitting in the car, uh, but otherwise the dash cam is just a self-contained package uh, that just records while you're driving and parked. There's also been some reports of reliability issues with the dash cam not recording properly and saving your video files to the memory card. And to help you avoid those same issues, here's the three main things that you're gonna need to know. Number one, the dash cam is very picky with memory card selection. It really does need a higher end card to ensure reliability. In fact, if you take a look on VFO's website, you'll see that there's even a lot of popular memory cards that work great in other dash cams that don't work well with the A139 Pro. And so down in the video description, I'm gonna link you guys uh, to the memory cards that VFO recommends to use with the A139 Pro. Second, due to the increased power draw of the dash cam, uh, VFO has released an updated hardwire power cable. And so if you're upgrading from an older VFO dash cam, uh, be sure to upgrade the hardwire cable too. And then third, when you receive your A139 Pro, be sure to head to VFO's website and grab the latest firmware for your dash cam. This way you get all the newest features and all the latest bug fixes. And then finally, due to the newer tech, the newer sensor, and the ability to add on all these extra cameras, it's also gonna be pricier than some of the entry-level dash cams. It retails for 229 for a single channel setup. If you go for two cameras, it's gonna be 299, and then the full three camera setup is gonna be 369. And if you wanna save some cash, here's some discount codes that you can use when purchasing from Amazon, Blackbox My Car, or direct from VFO. 
Now, finally, one last thing to note, there are going to be more dash cams coming out later this year that are also going to be featuring the new Starvis 2 sensor. However, with the A139 Pro specifically, and actually well like with other VFO dash cams, VFO in general does seem to do a good job of giving you the key features that you need and giving you a really good bang for the buck. And that's specifically are the key reasons why I'm recommending the A139 Pro, uh, as well as some of the other VFO dash cams in this list too. And so with all that said, if you're looking for the best all around dash cam that focuses on the key features that you need, good video quality, <laughs> driving and parking recording, etc., uh, the VFO A139 Pro is going to be the go-to pick. Next, moving on to some of the entry level options, for your affordable front only camera, uh, that's going to be the VFO A119 Mini. Now, this is the updated version of the A119 V3, which has been my go-to entry level pick for quite a while now. The A119 Mini, though, is an upgraded and modernized version, and now it's right around the same price uh, as the V3. Prices can fluctuate, though, and sometimes it is a few bucks more, but I think at this point, uh, this is the way to go. The dash cam records at 2K, which here in 2023 is going to be the sweet spot for giving you both great video quality uh, at a low price point. It can record both when you're driving as well as when you're parked. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi to connect it with your phone, and it adds voice notifications to keep you posted of any important information that you need to know. Memory card error. Please format the card. Now, this new A119 Mini, it's actually slightly thicker than the older A119 V3, but it is smaller otherwise, hence the name Mini. Now, as far as some of the downsides of the dash cam, it can only record out the front of the vehicle. It's not available with, say, a rear dash cam, for example. Additionally, there's no memory card that's included in the box. It is one of the more affordable options. And so for that reason, down in the video description, I'll also link you guys to a recommended memory card that you can use here with this dash cam. Now, by the time you guys watch this video, VFO will have officially announced their upgraded new A119 Mini 2. And they sent me a pre-production version to beta test while I was actually in the middle of editing this video. And it's essentially the same thing as the original A119 Mini, uh, but it's got two key upgrades. Number one, they've upgraded the image sensor. It now uses an upgraded 2K Sony Starvis 2 sensor, uh, which is going to give it improved video quality and improved low light performance. And number two, the dash cam can now be controlled remotely using voice commands. There's now 10 different voice commands that you can use to control the dash cam while driving. So let's say, for example, something important or interesting happened on the road and you want to save and protect that clip. Instead of pushing the emergency record button in the back of the dash cam or uh, purchasing that optional Bluetooth button, now you can protect that video clip just using your voice. Lock the video. And so if you'd like an upgraded version with a new image sensor and with voice control, uh, the new A119 Mini 2 is now available. Moving on next to your entry level two channel dash cams, so you can record both the front and the rear. In this case, we're going to take a look at the VFO A129 Plus Duo. This also records at 2K up front, but it now adds a rear 1080p dash cam. This way, you've now got video protection in both directions. And then the dash cam itself, it offers GPS and Wi-Fi, uh, an LCD in the back, uh, etc. Now, the main downside of the dash cam is the fact that it lacks buffered impact detection meaning unlike dash cams that offer buffered parking recording and are able to record entire events, uh, the A129 Plus is going to be in a sleep state, and only once the G-Sensor detects an impact, uh, that's when it's going to wake up and begin recording. An easy workaround for this, though, is just to have the dash cam set up uh, for continuous parking recording. Just switch it over to the low bitrate parking recording option, and that'll ensure that it's able to record everything while also reducing the video quality uh, to save on memory card space. Now, I also want to give an honorable mention to the VFO A229 Duo. This is the successor to the A129 Plus. It records in 2K for the front and for the rear. It adds back in that buffered parking recording capability, and you also get voice notifications too. Video protected. The 229 is also a bit bigger, which helps with cooling, uh, and it gives you a larger LCD display. And the cables that connect the front and rear cameras are now thinner and easier to install. Now that said, it's also a good bit more expensive than the A129 Plus. However, it does sometimes go on sale. And you can use the links below to check out the current pricing. But either way, the A229 Duo is going to be the better dash cam, uh, but the A129 Plus Duo is going to be the better value for the dollar. Now, moving on to some of the premium options, if you're looking for a solid dash cam with improved parking recording capabilities, take a look at the Thinkware U1000, specifically available with the optional radar module. The U1000 records at 4K up front and 2K in the rear, not 1080p uh, like most two channel dash cams. And so the rear video quality is also going to be a step up here. The U1000 can also alert you to things like red light cameras or speed cameras. And of course, it's going to offer that buffered parking recording capability. Now that said, what makes this one special here is going to be some of its energy saving capabilities and the fact that it can actually record for much longer periods of time uh, than traditional dash cams. 
For example, if you turn on the energy saving parking recording mode, that's gonna allow the U1000 to record for up to 40 days for over a month when using it with one of the recommended dash cam battery packs. Now, because I drive my car pretty often, I don't leave it parked for over a month like that. I did some testing here in my office uh, and I found that it actually recorded for 18 days. However, that was with actually triggering some uh, parking mode impacts. That's actually gonna wake up the dash cam, use more power for recording and then put it back to sleep. Now in the real world, most people probably aren't gonna have their car hit two to three times a day, <laughs> the way I was simulating here. So you're gonna get longer parking record times, but even 18 days, two and a half weeks or so, that's significantly longer than other dash cams that are record for like a day before they drain the battery. So the parking record times here are really good. Now the downside to using this parking recording mode though is the fact that it's non-buffered parking recording. The dash cam is asleep to save power and only once the G sensor detects the impact, then it wakes up, begins recording, and then goes back to sleep. Now, if you'd like both energy saving recording and buffered parking recording, well, in that case, you can take a look at Thinkware's optional radar module. It transmits radar out the front of your car to track if other vehicles are approaching you. Uh, when it senses that, it wakes up the U1000 to begin recording. Uh, and then in case that car actually hits you in a hit and run or something, uh, it's gonna go ahead and save that video clip to ensure that it records the entire thing. And in testing, I found that it gives me over nine days of parking record time. And so it's for this reason specifically that for a recent trip that I went on, where I left my car parked at the airport for almost a week, uh, I actually popped the U1000 in the car with the radar module to give me the extended parking recording uh, that I couldn't get from my traditional dash cams. And if you'd like to save some cash when ordering any of the Thinkware dash cams that I talk about in this video, here's some discount codes that you can use to take 5% off when purchasing from Blackbox My Car or direct from Thinkware. Now, as far as some of the downsides though of the U1000, number one, that radar module is only designed to record out the front of the vehicle. It's not gonna uh, transmit out the back. And so your buffered parking recording is only gonna work uh, for the front of the vehicle. That also only really helps for cars. It's not actually gonna track people that hit your car or anything. Uh, it's just for other cars in case of a hit and run. Second, the voice notifications in the U1000 are not particularly configurable. And so it's gonna be pretty chatty here at startup. During parking mode, motion detection recording. Over 10 and event detection recording. Two, occurred. Continuous recording will now start. GPS connected. Connected to the internet. But if you want to quiet it down, you pretty much have to shut off all the voice notifications altogether. You can't kind of turn on just the uh, notifications that you want. And then while it does offer some ADAS features for things like lane departure warning or forward collision warning, in practice, I find those features to be not particularly useful. I get a fair amount of false alerts and I ultimately just wind up disabling them altogether. And then finally, while the U1000 does offer some cloud capabilities so you can connect to it remotely or get notifications sent to your phone in case something happens, the cloud features are not particularly great. Now that said, next month, Thinkware is gonna be releasing the updated version called the U3000. I've got a pre-production copy here, and based on the new specs and features, it looks like it's going to be a nice upgrade over the U1000. Now that said, final versions of the U3000 should have even better video quality and an improved lens compared to my pre-production sample, and so make sure that you're subscribed for updates. Now like the U1000, it also records in 4K up front and 2K for the rear, but the front sensor has been upgraded from a first-gen Sony Starvis sensor to a Starvis 2 sensor to give it even better low-light performance. Additionally, the U3000's radar transmitter is now able to track people as well, not just cars like before. And importantly, the radar can now transmit both front and rear, so now you can get buffered parking recording in both directions. Additionally, the dash cam also does a better job of parking recording in high heat areas. Now, as far as the main downsides that I've noticed testing the U3000, the video quality is not quite as good as the A139 Pros, uh, but again, this U3000, it's a pre-production sample, and we're gonna have to see how the video quality improves with uh, production copies. So ultimately, video quality at this point is still TBD. Additionally, the U3000 lacks HDR capabilities, and so it does struggle at capturing license plates at night, uh, particularly when your headlights are shining directly on them. And unfortunately, due to CPU limitations, they're not gonna be able to add HDR to the U3000. Also, it's a pricey dash cam, and this is true both if you're getting the front-only version or if you're getting the two-channel front and rear configuration. But really, it seems like a lot of the money is gonna be going into the more advanced parking recording capabilities. Uh, like that radar module for the U1000, for example, that's a $90 accessory. Uh, it's built into the U3000 here, and it's built in both front and rear. And so a big reason of why you'd wanna consider the U3000 is because it can draw a lot less power while parked and thus give you much longer parking record times. And then finally, while the U3000 does have some cloud capabilities and it's compatible with Thinkware's new Thinkware Connected app, it's still not gonna be your best option when it comes to cloud functionality. 
And so if having a cloud-connected dash cam is your priority, in that case, your best cloud-connected dash cam is gonna be the Blackview DR970X two-channel LTE. The front dash cam records at 4K, uh, and the rear dash cam records at 1080p. What's special about this one though is you can pop a SIM card directly into the dash cam and get it connected to the cloud. Once you do that, you're gonna be able to see the car's location in real time on a map. You're also gonna be able to remotely live stream the dash cam's video, both when you're driving or when you're parked, a lot like a remote security camera. You can get real time notifications to your phone in case something happens to your car while you're parked. So let's say for an example, somebody hits your car, you're immediately gonna get a notification to your phone with an image preview so you can see what's going on. Plus that video can immediately start uploading and getting backed up to the cloud, which can be helpful in case somebody breaks into your car and actually steals the dash cam. That way you're still gonna have the video footage and the evidence to share with police. Additionally, you're also able to start live streaming in real time the video feed from your dash cam while it's simultaneously uploading that video to the cloud, something you're not going to be able to do from some of the other dash cams that also offer cloud capabilities. The dash cam, of course, is able to record both when you're driving or when you're parked, uh, and it does have buffered parking recording. Additionally, the dash cam does a better job with voice notifications when you get back in the car, uh, letting you know when something important happened, but staying quiet otherwise. An impact was detected during parking mode. Now, as far as some of the downsides though, number one, the video quality. It's better than other lower res dash cams, but the video quality is not gonna be as good as other premium 4K models. Now, while Blackview is actively working on improving the video quality here of their 970 series dash cams, it's still not gonna be as good as what you'll find from other dash cams and even uh, some other less expensive dash cams. Blackview is traditionally focused on cloud capabilities and this can come at the expense of all out video quality. Uh, now, speaking of cloud stuff, Blackview recently updated their app, and there's been a lot of issues and complaints here uh, with the new version of their cloud app. Some of the biggest concerns stem from some privacy and security risks with uploading and publicly sharing people's dash cam footage. Again, this is also something now that they're having to address and fix. They're now removing some of the like social media type video sharing stuff that they had in originally. And they've also already disabled any automatic video uploading uh, that's viewable publicly. This way, if somebody wants to share a clip, they have to first watch it and explicitly approve it. Next, that internet connection that the Blackview has uh, with the SIM card, one cool thing is it can actually act as like a Wi-Fi hotspot uh, to share its internet connection with other devices in your car, whether it's phones, tablets, other radar detectors, etc. However, that's not gonna work uh, if you wanna have another Blackview dash cam connect to that first one, just due to uh, bandwidth restrictions. Uh, this isn't gonna be an issue if you're running just one Blackview dash cam, it's just, it has its own internet connection and it shares it. But if you wanna add some additional camera angles like I do, I run a pair of uh, standalone Blackview dash cams, one dash cam unfortunately cannot share its internet connection with the other. So for that reason, either they each need their own data connections or you need like a separate Wi-Fi hotspot for both of them to connect to. Now I've run Blackview dash cams as my primary dash cam for many years, but to be honest, this is probably the least enthusiastic I've been uh, out of any of the new Blackviews. Now having the highest video quality possible has never been their priority, especially because they need to balance it with all the cloud stuff. But nevertheless, it seems like the competition is actually advancing much more quickly uh, when it comes to the video quality front. Additionally, the cloud stuff is their focus, but the new version of their cloud app has a lot of issues and complaints. And to be honest, I spent a lot of time wondering whether or not I wanna include this at all. Well, if cloud capabilities are your priority, there are other manufacturers that also offer cloud features. Uh, you've got companies like Thinkware, Garmin, Ring, Nexar, etc. Nevertheless, if you take a look at all of the features and capability that Blackview offers compared to the competition, they still offer the best cloud capabilities. And so despite the issues, despite the lower video quality and whatnot, if the cloud capability is your priority, the Blackviews are still gonna be the way to go. Now something to note, Blackview also sells the DR970X, uh, but without the built-in LTE. And the standard DR970X is gonna have the traditional Blackview dash cam design, and it's gonna be a little bit smaller too, uh, since there's no LTE antenna inside of it, and they don't have to have the additional cooling and heat sinks. And if your car already has a Wi-Fi hotspot built in, you can just connect your Blackview directly to that and get your cloud capabilities that way. That said, most of the time, that's only gonna work while you're driving. The car's in-car Wi-Fi will turn off when you're parked to save battery. And so if you wanna add in that cloud capability, uh, Blackview actually sells an accessory called the CM100G LTE. And it's basically an external LTE antenna that plugs into the side of the dash cam. The antenna you're then gonna to wanna to run somewhere into your car. Uh, and then that cable, it is gonna be one extra cable that you're gonna to have to unplug every time you wanna pop the memory card out of the dash cam. Having it integrated is gonna be a little bit more convenient, uh, but it does make the dash cam physically larger. It's also worth noting that the external LTE option uh, is gonna cost more than if you get it with the built-in LTE. 
That said, sometimes I do see promotions and sales where you can get that external LTE antenna for free, and you can check for any promotions and stuff using the links down below. And if that's the case, then you can actually wind up getting the external LTE version for less money, and you wind up getting a smaller dash cam, uh, which is a benefit too. Kind of pros and cons to both approaches. And if you'd like to save some cash off any of the Blackview dash cams or accessories mentioned in this video, here's some discount codes that you can use when purchasing from Blackbox My Car or direct from Blackview. Now, while we're on the topic of smaller dash cams, a concern that people bring up sometimes is if the dash cam itself can become a target for thieves, well, you wouldn't want them to steal the dash cam itself or to get your memory card with the video and audio recordings from your drives. Well, if that's your concern, take a look at the Blackview DR770X box. With this dash cam, instead of having the brains and processor and all that stuff for your dash cam up on the windshield, uh, you're going to get a separate box that you can securely install and hide somewhere in your vehicle. And this is going to give you two primary benefits. Number one, the dash cams themselves are now smaller and less visible. Uh, you're going to get three 1080p dash cams for front, rear, and interior recording. Additionally, that rear camera can either be the traditional one that's just installed on your rear window, or they also have a truck version with an external waterproof rear camera. The rear and interior dash cams are going to be around the same size as what you'll see from some other dash cams, but it's really the front dash cam that's going to be smaller compared to other options. Now, it's not teeny tiny or anything, especially with the tamper-proof security cover that goes on uh, that prevents you from removing the cable. Plus, the front dash cam is a little bit bigger than the other two because you've got the speaker built in so that you can hear the different alerts. But nevertheless, that front dash cam is going to be more compact than other options because you don't have uh, the main brains of the dash cam uh, right up there on your windshield. Now, the second benefit of this setup is in case somebody actually does break into your car uh, and they wind up stealing the dash cams off the windshield, they're not actually going to get any of the video footage. You get to keep it. The memory card is not in any of the dash cams. It's actually in that box that's securely hidden uh, somewhere in your vehicle. So for that reason, this type of setup is actually going to be better for both security and for privacy. And then if you'd like to use Blackview's cloud capabilities, you can either have the dash cam connected to your in-car Wi-Fi, or you can plug in that external LTE antenna like we talked about before. The dash cam can record while you're driving or parked, of course. Plus, it also comes with a remote emergency recording button, similar to the optional one that VFO sells. Now, as far as some of the downsides of the dash cam, uh, well, it is going to be limited to just 1080p out of all three cameras. The video quality is not going to be as good as some of the other options, especially compared to something like the VFO A139 Pro 3 channel. Uh, that offers 4K recording out of the front dash cam and 1080p out of the other two. And despite VFO having some uh, trade-offs and video quality reductions when you set it up as the full 3 channel mode, uh, the 4K video that it's going to produce is still going to look better uh, than what you'll get out of the Blackview option. Not to mention, besides the improved video quality, the VFO is also going to be $80 cheaper. That external LTE antenna to get the cloud capabilities does cost extra, uh, and that's going to bring the price from $450 to nearly $600. And so the 770X box with the cloud capabilities is actually going to cost you an additional $225 over the three channel VFO A139 Pro. And so again, here with the Blackview, you're going to be sacrificing some video quality and you're going to be paying more, but you're going to be getting the uh, cloud capabilities and you're going to be getting uh, this different design with kind of these separate box and the memory card and the brains and everything actually tucked out of sight and out of the way. So again, trade-offs just like anything else. And then as far as parking recording, I've talked about it a lot in this video. Uh, in order to get any of these dash cams wired up for parking recording, uh, it's going to of course need a power source while you're parked. The easiest and traditional way to do it is just to uh, tap it into your car battery. Uh, another option is to actually get a dedicated dash cam battery pack. This is my preferred solution. I typically get longer parking record times. It doesn't create any potential issues with draining my car battery. I have had some issues with that in the past. Certain brands of cars can have issues and whatnot. So uh, when it comes to dedicated dash cam battery packs, I've taken a look at all the different options that are currently available. And my go-to pick for a dash cam battery pack is going to be the Black Box My Car Power Cell 8. This, in my opinion, is going to be the best dash cam battery pack currently on the market. Now, what's interesting is all the best ones actually are made by the same company and have a lot of the same internals. However, with the PowerCell 8, there's a couple specific advantages. For example, number one, you're going to get more options for pre-spliced hardwire cables that can plug directly into various dash cams. Number two, this is the only one that's available with an optional expansion battery in case you want to plug in additional battery packs to get even longer parking record times. And then number three, it's also the most affordable <laughs> out of the different options. And when using the link down in the description and purchasing for Black Box My Car, you're also going to get uh, an additional 5% off. And that actually applies to uh, most of the other dash cams that are going to be talking about in this video as well. 
Now, if you're running a Blackview dash cam, you can check out the new B130X. It's got the same capacity and all as the PowerCell 8. However, it's going to integrate into the same Blackview app that you're going to use to configure the dash cam and access the cloud capabilities. And it's going to work not only with 12 volt vehicles, which are going to be your traditional passenger cars, but also for 24 volt vehicles like your commercial trucks. And this makes sense because Blackview a lot of times focuses on their uh, fleet capabilities with their cloud stuff. Then Thinkware sells a battery pack as well called the iVolt Extra, uh, same capacity as the other two batteries, and it also supports both 12 and 24 volt vehicles. But the main advantage here is if you want to integrate it with the U3000 specifically, uh, you can actually hook the two up so that the dash cam can provide spoken notifications regarding your battery status. The remaining of iVolt battery is about 5%. Now, as a launch special, Thinkware is offering the U3000 front and rear plus the iVolt battery pack for 150 bucks off. Better yet, at checkout, there's an option at the top of the page to enter in a coupon code and you can type in the code VORTEX. And when you do that, it's going to take an additional 5% off the pre-order launch special price. And so with all that said, if we just want to summarize the highlights here of the very best dash cams that are currently available on the market, uh, your best all around dash cam is going to be the VFO A139 Pro. Your best entry level front only dash cam is going to be the VFO A119 Mini, though VFO just announced the new Mini 2, and so for a few bucks more, you can now get the upgraded version. And then your best entry level front and rear dash cam is going to be the VFO A129 Plus. Uh, your best high end 4K dash cam with long term parking recording is going to be the Thinkware U1000 with the optional radar module. That said, there is a newer version coming out in June called the U3000. It's currently only available for pre order but it's going to be the better option over the U1000. The best dash cam for cloud capabilities is going to be the Blackview DR970X two-channel LTE. The best option if you're going to be more security conscious is going to be the Blackview DR770X box. And then finally, the best dash cam parking mode battery pack is going to be the Black Box My Car PowerCell 8. And for links to all the dash cams and accessories that I talked about here in this video, you'll find those down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing great and you found this video helpful. Stay safe, happy driving, and I'll see you in the next video.